The National Medal for Museum and Library Service is the nation's highest honor for libraries and museums that are serving their communities in exciting ways. Hill Museum and Manuscript Library Director Father Columba Stewart and community member Dr. Getachew Hiley traveled to Washington to receive the National Medal and spoke to IMLS about how the library impacts the community. So we're a sponsored program of St. John's Abbey and University, which was founded by Benedictine monks in, the 18, in 1856. And in the 1960s, some of our community began to be very worried about what would happen to monastic libraries in Europe. There had been two world wars, there had been a lot of loss, it was the time of the Cold War. Monasteries in places like Austria and Germany were potentially on the front line of a nuclear war. And so the idea was to apply what at that time was cutting edge technology, 35 millimeter microfilm, to go and photograph these manuscripts just in case. But very quickly, the value of the project was evident for other places. So we started work in Ethiopia before its revolution because you had this incredible Christian culture, little studied, and then the wisdom of the project was proved when the country was engulfed in revolution, dictatorship, civil war, and many of the manuscripts we photographed disappeared. Um, like I left Ethiopia because of <coughs> political situation there. At that time, it was a, a military junta which was ruling the country and there was no freedom of speech, there was no freedom at all, so we started revolting against, uh, uh, protesting the oppression, so that is why uh, they uh, attacked me and, uh, and left me on a wheelchair. So I left the country to come here at St. John's University to catalog the manuscripts they have. They have scholars uh, uh, of Christianity who would like to know what books that have been translated, if any of them have been lost in other countries, they might be found in his translation in Ethiopia. The project, the, pr the principle of the work is to go to the monastery, microfilm them, and leave the books there, bring the microfilm here. In more recent years, we've done two things. We've switched to high color or high quality color digital imaging. So Gatachu came to St. John's in the 1970s to work with microfilm. Now we have people in locations around the world simply working with digital images and sending in their cataloging data that we can put into our database. All of these places are remarkable in different ways. Um, many of them are, are known to Western scholars or the existence of their manuscripts is known, but they've been inaccessible. And we've had the experience of finding manuscript collections people had forgotten about, manuscript collections that had been moved and nobody had seen for decades or, in some cases, over a century ago, and then finding collections that no one in the West, at least, ever knew existed. So we're expecting all kinds of discoveries from manuscripts we're photographing in Syria, Iraq, India, comparable to what Gatachu's found in the Ethiopian manuscripts, uh, texts previously unknown, the oldest known copies of books of the Ethiopian Bible. We're finding things like that in Syriac, in Armenian, in Christian Arabic. And it's only when the catalogers sit down and do this patient work that Katachu does that these manuscripts speak again. And there could be remarkable things there. So we microfilmed 93,000 manuscripts until 2003. Uh, Katachi is still working on the 8,000 Ethiopian manuscripts that were microfilmed in that time. Since 2003, we've photographed over 30,000 manuscripts in high quality digital imaging. So that's what we're going through now. And what we're going to find there, who knows, but it's surely going to be remarkable. <laughs>